Hi everybody, my name is Michael Levan, Developer Advocate at Octopus Deploy, and today on Will It Deploy, we're going to discuss how to deploy a containerized application to Kubernetes, specifically Azure Kubernetes Services, using Octopus Deploy. Now, there are a few prerequisites and what you're going to need to essentially follow along. The first thing you're going to need is, of course, an Octopus Deploy server. Then you're going to need a Kubernetes cluster. Again, we will be using AKS, Azure Kubernetes Services. We will be following the Azure way of doing it with AKS, but if you have another Kubernetes cluster, you can absolutely use it as well. And then finally, we're gonna use an Azure account. So what we're gonna be looking at in this video is how to take an Nginx image and deploy it via Octopus Deploy so we can get our application up and running on an AKS cluster. If you're following along, we do want to let you know that at the time of recording this specific video, we're using Octopus Deploy version 2020.5.0-RC0003. Before jumping right into the demo, let's go ahead and take a look at an architecture diagram of essentially what we'll be doing in this video. We're going to have our Octopus Deploy server, and to be able to use the Kubernetes step to deploy our Docker image, we're going to need a few things. The first is the Docker feed. The Docker feed allows us to pull a Docker image directly from Docker Hub, and this can be a private registry or a public registry. And then we're gonna have an AKS deployment target. Now that deployment target can actually be any Kubernetes cluster in AWS, in Google Cloud, even a raw Kubernetes cluster running on a bare metal server. But in this case, we're gonna be using AKS. And then finally, we're gonna need a way to authenticate to Azure, and then with that, we're gonna be using an Azure account that will set up an Octopus Deploy. So once we have all of that set up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the Kubernetes deployment step underneath our processes and our project so we can set up where we're gonna be deploying from, and we will be deploying from that Kubernetes deployment step. And then we're gonna take a look at inside of that deployment step, the YAML manifest that we can use and create to deploy our Nginx Docker image to AKS. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the demo. Let's start setting up what we're gonna need in our Octopus Deploy cluster to be able to connect to Kubernetes. So the first thing that we're gonna set up is an Azure account. So we're gonna to go to infrastructure, and then we're gonna to go to accounts. Under accounts, you can see that I do have a few different accounts already available, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you exactly how this can be done. Click add account, Azure subscription, and then here you can start setting up a name. So for example, Azure Auth 1, you can give this a description, Azure authentication, and then down here is where you're going to input either the app registration, for example, or a management certificate. So you can put in your subscription ID, you can put in a tenant ID and the application ID based on that service principle, or you can upload a management certificate. So what I've done is I've already created an account that has been tested and I went the service principle route. So I'm gonna go back to accounts, I'm gonna discard my changes, and I'm gonna show you the account that already exists. So if I click on here, you can see that I have my subscription ID, tenant ID, application ID, and my password. That's the secret that gets created from a service principle. Next, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to create a deployment target for AKS. So under infrastructure where we already are, we're gonna go up to deployment targets. And again, you can see the same thing here. I do have a few different deployment targets already available. So let's go ahead and actually create a new one. So I'm gonna to go to add deployment target. So we're gonna choose Kubernetes cluster because that's what we're deploying to. And then we're gonna click Kubernetes cluster. And then from here, we can give it a name. So we can say AKS2. I already have AKS1 and AKS, so we'll do AKS2. Then I'm gonna select the environment that I want. I wanna be deploying this to dev. I'm gonna choose a new target role. So for example, I can either create a new one or I can add one that already exists. I'm gonna use AKS1. And then once I scroll down, I can choose the different authentication method I wanna use. Because I'm deploying to Azure, I can use Azure Service Principle, and then I can select my account and go to Azure Auth, and then I can choose the name that I want here for my AKS cluster, and this is gonna be pointing directly to my cluster that already exists. So for example, we can see demo AKS Michael Levan, 
And then my resource group is Michael Levan Resources. And then under Kubernetes details, I can essentially choose if I want to go to default, for example, for my namespace, and then the worker pool that I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the default worker pool. Scrolling down, I can also choose what environment I want to use. In this case, I'm going to use the runs directly on a worker, and this is the worker that's running my Oxpost deploy server right now. And then I can go ahead and I can click save on this. Now, even though I did create this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a deployment target that already exists. So I'm going to go back to infrastructure. I'm going to go to deployment targets. And as you can see, I have a few different deployment targets here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to AKS. And this is the one that I'm going to use for the purpose of this demo. And then if I go to connectivity, I can see that it's healthy and it's good to go. If I want to check the health, I absolutely can as well. Now I'm ready to create my new Docker feed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to library, external feeds, and then under external feeds, you can see that I already have a Docker external feed, but we'll go ahead and we'll create a new one anyways. So I can click add feed, and then under feed type, I'm gonna choose what type of feed that I wanna use. In this case, I wanna use Docker container registry. And then I'm gonna type feed name, so I'm gonna call it Docker one. And we can see that this URL already exists. This is exactly what we need. This is gonna index all of Docker Hub. And if I scroll down, I can also choose a registry path and I can type in credentials. Now, the reason that I don't have to type in credentials for this specific purpose is because the Nginx image that we're using, it's public facing. Because the Nginx image is public facing, I don't have to authenticate anywhere, so I don't have to put in any, any credentials. So I'm gonna click save and test. And then I can test and see that this external feed works. So I can type in Nginx, for example, and click the search button. And as you can see, these are all of the Nginx images that exist on Docker Hub that are public facing and do not require any authentication. So now we're ready to start setting up our steps so we can deploy our Nginx image to AKS. So I'm gonna go to projects, and then under projects, under one of my existing project groups, I'm just gonna create a new project and I'm gonna name this Nginx to AKS. I'm gonna have it under the Kubernetes deployments project group under my default lifecycle. Then I'm gonna click save. Once I'm in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to process and I'm gonna to choose to add a new step. Now under the choose step template, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Kubernetes. Then I'm gonna scroll down here and then under the installed step templates, I'm gonna deploy Kubernetes. So once I'm in here, what I wanna do is I have this step here and I can give this a name if I want to or I can keep the default name. I can click notes and add in any notes if I want to. I can ensure that this step has the ability to be disabled. I can choose the execution location. In this case, I'm gonna be executing against the default worker pool. And then here's where my targets are. So I want to ensure that I use a specific target to point to where my AKS cluster is. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to use the AKS target role. I'm going to ensure that the container image runs directly on the default worker. And then here's where we can edit the YAML. So I'm going to click on edit YAML here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in some YAML that I've already created. To go over this code, essentially what it's doing is it's giving it a kind of deployment. The type is deployment. We're specifying our name of Nginx Octopus. We're putting it in the default namespace. We're ensuring that it has two replica pods that are gonna be created. The strategy is if it already exists, it's going to recreate. And then if we scroll down here, we can look at the image that's being used, which is Nginx, and the port that we're gonna be opening, which is port 80. At this point, we're gonna click done. We're gonna click save. And then if I scroll up all the way to the top, I'm going to create a new release based on this step. So if I click create release, then I click save, and then I'm gonna to deploy to dev. At this point, I'm gonna click the deploy button, and then we're going to now be able to see our deployment run successfully to our AKS cluster. And as we can see, our Nginx image has been deployed successfully. So let's head over to the terminal and confirm that. I'm at my terminal here and I'm gonna run kubectl get deployments. And as we can see, our Nginx octopus image has been successfully deployed. So now let's take a look at what we did. 
We set up a Docker feed so we could ensure that we could connect to Docker Hub. We then created a AKS deployment target so we could authenticate to our AKS cluster. We created an Azure account for the authentication to the AKS cluster. We then created a new project and then we used the Kubernetes deployment step template to deploy an Nginx image to our AKS cluster. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next time on Will It Deploy.